Previously, on Sausage Fingers and Tiny Things, we made a coffin. But to whom does it belong? Stay, Stay tuned. tuned. Thanks for coming back to see part two of this coffin build. Of course, as you are smart people, you probably figured out that this build is uh, going to include a corpse. <laughs> so I built myself a corpse and covered in a beautiful shroud. I mean, I don't know if beautiful is the right word. As I was doing this, I was making up a little story for this guy. His name is Fred. He just lived back in the olden days when we used to bury people in shrouds, I guess. But how did he meet his demise? I hear you ask? Well, <laughs> let me tell you a story. I think he tripped over a rat when he was drunk one night and drowned in the uh, sewage of the disgusting old streets of the old timey days. I don't know. I just work here. Said that Marco Polo was in the year 1275. So it's not just a water sport. I knew it. Excuse me. When did the Mongols rule China? I don't know. I just work here. Since I really wasn't sure how I was going to do this, I went into it kind of without a plan. I'm just making it up as I go along. I got a feel for it. It's a little bit like drawing, sort of. And all this is just me working on proportion in relation to the coffin. Now for the fun part, not really, folds. Folds in fabric. Um, I can't draw them. I'm not very good at sculpting them. But you know what? Who cares? Once this camera is not focused on my thumb, you can see that I'm I'm getting it. I'm getting the hang of it. And uh <laughs> Here I realized that his feet were a bit small, uh, so I added some clay, worked out I guess. And in my mind's eye, when I thought about this project, he was bound by some strips of cloth or something. So that's what I'm doing here. Of course, the first one I did kind of sucked, but I think as I go along, you'll see that I get a better idea of what looks closer to what I had in mind. And as you can see here, I am trying to improve camera angles so that you don't get the fuzzy look of the project in the background with my thumb in sharp focus in the foreground. So, Kudos to me, thumbs up if you like it. You can see now I'm kind of getting the hang of making those little ropes.
And so here I'm just cleaning up the edges and then I will cut out the parchment paper around it and bake the son of a bitch. Baking and cutting, cutting and baking. I do not know what that was about. So I said I was going to paint the coffin and that's what I'm doing here. I got some chalk paint from the dollar store and cleans up the shiny super glue mess I left and uh, kind of deepens the dark. And then I'm adding a bright white coat to Fred here. Was that his name? And uh, <laughs> and then I will be adding some color and definition with some chalk pastels or whatever those are that I'm using. I did want to add some weathering to it with some of my gold paint. I must have not stirred it up very well because it turned out silver, but that's okay. I do like the dry brushing. It brought out my designs nicely. Now I'm adding some yellow just to see what it looks like against the white and I think I'm going to add some brown to it to make it look a little bit dirtier. I could have added um, some extra color to it but I'm trying to be aware of the time I'm taking on each of these projects so I'm not mired down in the details as I stare at one of my new projects coming up that's detailed. I'm actually really pleased with it and kind of thinking I might make it into a pendant. Let us pay our respects to Fred, who died from rats and drowning in sewage. I, I'm sorry, dude. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this two-parter. If you're interested in my other spooky offerings, feel free to subscribe, as I'll be posting pretty regularly through the month of October. I also have future plans for a bunch of other stuff, so subscribe if you want to see all the weird shit I get up to. Okay, thanks, bye.